Hey everybody, this is Lieutenant Ken Norton. I'm uh, here to go over the HCFR peer review. Uh, we recently did seizures, narcotic administration, and trauma calls. Uh, reviewed several calls. Um, so we'll just get started. The purpose of the Q&A, the peer review Q&A, was to create concise EMS documentation, interpretive of quality patient care, identify inefficiencies and oversights in documentation, identify inefficiencies in transport priority decisions, and improve upon already excellent patient care. Everybody's doing a great job when it comes to patient care. Just a few little bumps that we found in documentation just to kind of help you out with your patient care and explain to people who review your calls um, what you did. Explain a little bit better how you treated the patient or way you what you may have withheld from the patient. We'll start with seizures. Uh, one of the things we found on seizures where there was no pertinent information ruling out spinal immobilization. You may have found somebody with a GCS of less than 14, patient found in a questionable position, questionable mentation or presentation. Information on initial patient presentation. Uh, a lot of you didn't find or explain why you didn't choose C-spine or why you didn't give any type of um, certain patient care. How did the patient respond to EMS presence? Was the patient conscious, alert, and oriented? And how was their mentation? These are all important things that you guys can put in your documentation to help us get a better understanding of why you may have chosen a specific treatment or why you withheld a specific treatment. Um, especially in seizure calls, you might find a patient, many of you said that were lying on the ground or you know there was no suspected trauma, but you didn't specify that there was no specific trauma. Uh, and therefore, we have no idea why you didn't take spinal precautions when you found the patient in a questionable manner. Uh, you would note that there was a low GCS, but no C-spine was taken. We need that painted picture. Uh, you paint the picture, it helps everyone understand better what type of treatment was given and why you continue to do what you did. BGL assessments. <clears throat> Uh, there were many that we found that there was no BGL assessments, and BGL assessments and seizures are very important. Uh, any type of altered mental status or questionable mentation, a BGL assessment is important. Uh, it should be assessed every time. Every seizure call or questionable mentation should be assessed into the BGLs. It should be documented in your vitals and your interventions. Um, later on in the PowerPoint, we'll go, go over that a little bit more. Uh, it just helps everyone who's reviewing the call get a better understanding of the situation. And you should put a pre and post treatment if indicated. If you gave glucose or any other treatment, uh, you should give a, a uh, BGL beforehand and after your treatment. That's, I'm sure many of you are doing that, but some of them we did find slip through the cracks. IVO2 monitor and a 12 lead as indicated. And of course, get your signatures for your Valium administration and your waste, and remember your six frights when given any medication. Narcotic administrations. Many of the indications weren't specified in documentation. Was it trauma? Was it cardiac? Psych? Or other pain management? Uh, these are important facts to know when documenting, given, especially in narcotic administrations, we need to know exactly what was going on during the administration. And of course, IV O2 monitor, there is no exceptions to this. Every patient will receive ALS care and ALS treatment when any time a, a, a narcotic is administered. And of course, 12 lead as indicated. And again, signatures for your administration and your waste and your six rights. Speaking of your six rights, we're just going to review them. Was it the right patient, the right medication, the right dose, the right time, the right route, the right documentation, and we also have the seventh right, which is the right to refuse treatment. Anytime you give a narcotic, you should document in your report that the patient was either, the, the administration was from implied or informed consent. 
we should know that the, whether the patient was alert and oriented and you gave them the rundown of what you're giving them and, and so they have the right to refuse it if they need to or if they choose to. And if they're not alert, then of course we take that as an imply consent uh, to give that medication. I want to talk a little bit about the, the uh, NARC form. Uh, many people have been getting a little confusion with the concentration of the drug right here. Uh, the, what Horry County Fire Rescue is looking for is the concentration of the total volume. So it's basically what is in that that uh, carpet jet when you pull it out or what's in that vial. And so we know we carry volume uh, 10 milligrams to 2 milliliters. Our morphine is 4 milligrams to 1 milliliter and our fentanyl is 100 mics to 2 milliliters. So that will be concentration of total volume written right here in concentration of drug. Trauma calls. Uh, choosing a private facility, we found that a uh, a lot of times there was questionable uh, where to transport a patient. Uh, it's easy just to follow your HCFR trauma criteria. If you got to call online medical control, not a problem. Give them a call. But if you have to call online medical control, you should transport ALS regardless of the doctor's decision to rule out trauma. If it's questionable enough for you to call the doctor, you should receive ALS care. And err on the side of caution always. When in doubt, go ALS, you can't go wrong. If the specialty center isn't indicated, if it's non-trauma or um, you know, not required to go to our trauma facility, which is Grand Strand, should thoroughly assess that in your documentation and why you ruled it out, why you ruled out the need to go to Grand Strand or any other specialty center. Other than that, this is the, the area we found the least amount of deficiencies. Everybody did really, really good jobs on documentation. Um, and gave excellent patient care. Uh, just a few minute details we can work on. Good job. When it comes to BLS transports, documentation is equally important to all levels of patient care. Thorough documentation of transport decision and patient care. Explain why ALS was ruled out. Why is the EMT riding with this call? And when in doubt, always provide ALS transport. EMTs and, and paramedics, uh, you know, medics don't be too proud to allow your EMT to review your call, to look over your doc, you know, read your narrative, kind of look over how you did your documentation. One, it helps the EMT learn how to become a better documenter. And uh, two, they can, you know, possibly find any deficiencies, something you may have left out, they can remind you of. And the same goes for the EMTs. Any EMT out there riding with a BLS call, don't be afraid to have your partner, your ALS partner, review your documentation. Uh, this is how we're going to get better at this. Blood pressures. We found that blood pressure should be attained during initial assessment and there should be a manual blood pressure. Uh, you know, document that you palpated the pulse and where it was at and document otherwise why you were unable to. Here's the Screenshot from our visual EMS documentation for the BGL assessments. You can see the, the BGL or the glucose reading the initial and post treatment down at the bottom. You will need to document your BGL assessment findings here. And if it's just an initial, of course, it's only going to be an initial. And if there was no need for post treatment, then that's pretty self explanatory. You're also going to document your BGL assessment here. I know it seems a little redundant, um, but when it comes to reviewing the reports, this is all critical information. Uh, and it just kind of gives everybody a better idea of what was going on at the call and what was going on with the patient and what you were doing to treat the patient. So in summary, paint the picture of the patient. Why was a particular treatment administered? Why was treatment withheld? You need to let us know what was going on and why you were doing what you were doing or why you chose not to do a certain treatment, why you withheld certain things. You know, paint that picture. Are they conscious, alert, and oriented? How did they respond to EMS on your arrival? What's their mentation and their presentation? What's their Glasgow coma score? Rule out C-spine in your documentation, whether it's trauma, seizures, whatever the case may be. 
it needs to be ruled out, especially when it's questionable. You may have documented in, in your narrative uh, the patient was found a certain way that might indicate C-spine, but yet there's nothing in the documentation that says there was C-spine or that it was taken. Uh, you need to explain why you, know, you chose not to go that route. Obtain a manual blood pressure if possible. That's also another one that has, seems to be slipped by. Sometimes it's, it's not possible. You may not be able to do it, but um, if possible, you need to try the best you can to obtain a manual BP. When obtaining that VGL, you need to put it in your vitals and in your interventions. You need to continue thorough documentation on BLS and ALS treatment and all your transport decisions. You also have 24 hours to complete any call, otherwise you need to notify your company officer and your EMS officer. Thorough documentation on BLS and ALS treatment and transport decisions. You need to document why the closest facility, why you chose the closest facility and not necessarily a specialty resource facility, and you also need to, know, to document why you chose a specialty resource center. Alright, that's all we have. Good luck everybody. Stay safe. Let us know if you need anything.